Hello, my name is Anna Zovko and welcome to the third episode of FIP CPD Bites, a serious uh, pharmacological and non-pharmacological treatment of period pain. This episode will provide an overview of different approaches of treating period pain and associated symptoms. Learning objectives of these episodes are to discuss about OTC analgetics, to discuss about hormonal therapy, to provide non-pharmacological approaches to treating period pain and associated symptoms, and also to understand the gender pain gap and consider sociocultural aspects related to the menstruation. So let's start. Over-the-counter analgetics are widely used for managing period pain due to their accessibility and also due to their effectiveness. The first-line treatments are non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen, ketoprofen, naproxen, and diclofenac. These medications work by inhibiting prostaglandin synthesis, which helps to reduce uterine contractions and elevate pain. Among these, ibuprofen and diclofenax are particularly effective for primary dysmenorrhea. However, diclofenac may cause some side effects compared to ibuprofen. That makes ibuprofen preferred choice for its better safety profile. For those who cannot tolerate non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs, acetaminophen and aspirins are effective alternatives for mild and moderate pain relief. Hormonal therapies such as combined oral contraceptives containing estrogen and progestin are effective for managing several period pain and conditions like endometriosis. This medication can regulate hormonal fluctuations, reduce menstrual flow, and also elevate pain. Progestin-only contraceptives like implants and intrauterine devices can also suppress ovulation and ease menstrual symptoms. Pharmacies can provide essential concealing basic and basic about basic information of this medication offering ongoing support and guidance guidance through the course of therapy. Non-pharmacological strategies can be highly effective in managing period pain. Heat therapy or using heating pads or hot water bottles on the lower abdomen helps to reduce pain, improving blood flow and relax, relaxing muscles. Regular exercise is also very essential because uh, especially aerobic activities uh, because they are linked to lower menstrual pain severity due to the release of endorphins, uh, which are uh, the body's natural pain relievers. Additionally, dietary modifications, including diet rich omega-3 fatty acid, magnesium and vitamin E, may help to elevate symptoms by reducing inflammation and uh, muscle cramps. Assessing whether a patient has primary or secondary dysmenorrhea is also, uh, is also vital. Primary dysmenorrhea generally occurs without an underlying condition, where secondary dysmenorrhea can indicate a disorder like endometriosis or fibroids. So if secondary dysmenorrhea is suspected, it's important to refer the patient for further evaluation treatment. Uh, a true patient's history and assessment are uh, key to making this distinguish, distinguish. So engage in professional development to ensure we're providing the best care possible. The gender pain gap highlights a critical disparity in how pain is perceived and treated between genders, often resulting in women experiencing under-treatment. Spe uh, specifically, menstrual pain is frequently normalized and dismissed, leading to delays or inadequate care. Additionally, in clinical settings, women's pain is more commonly attributed to psychological issues rather than being treated aggressively, unlike similar symptoms in men. As a pharmacist, 
we play a key role in addressing these issues by educating healthcare providers about gender biases and empowering patients to advocate for their care. We can enhance the accuracy and empathy in diagnosis and managing period pain. Furthermore, pharmacists must actively educate a public on effective pain management and guide them to way, uh, where to seek appropriate help. This approach is essential in uh, bridging the gender pain gap and also to improving overall patient's care. In many cultures, menstruation is stigmatized, leading to feelings of shame uh, to discuss about menstrual pain. This, combined with socioeconomic factors and cultural backgrounds, can limit access to healthcare and affect uh, the quality of treatment and uh, woman, uh, that women receive. Additionally, language barriers and cultural norms may prevent effective communication between patients and healthcare providers. To overcome these challenges, it's essential to provide culturally sensitive care that respects patients' beliefs and practices, which, is turn and uh, which in turn enhance compliance and outcomes. Public health initi uh, in uh, initiatives aim to educate communication between uh, about menstrual health and also can uh, help to reduce stigma and improve access to care, ensuring that all women receive support that they need. So pharmacists can play a crucial role in addressing the gender pain gap in a socio-cultural factor through pro uh, to proactive measures. They can involve in some educational initiatives by training healthcare providers and also by education of patients. They can promote evidence-based practices, advocating for research or applying some guidelines. They can also be uh, engaged in uh, community activities like public awareness campaigns. They can support networks. And uh, in the end, they can also be involved in empowering patients, encouraging self-advocacy, and also navigating that self-care uh, care. Uh, these are some key to takeaways. Non-steroid anti-inflammatory uh, drugs like ibuprofen are first-line treatments for period pain, while acetaminophen is a suitable art, uh, alternative. Or oral contraceptives and progestin-only options are effective in uh, managing several period pain. Non-pharmacological approaches such as heat therapy, exercise, and diet rich with omega-3 acid and magnesium can also help to reduce symptoms. Women's pain is often under treat due to gender biases, so pharmacies should uh, focus on educating providers and empowering patients. Providing care that respects cultural be uh, beliefs improves treatment outcomes, and the public health initiatives can help to reduce stigma and also to enhance as uh, access to care. So in the end, thank you for watching all three episodes of CPD Bite series on managing period pain. We hope these resources have equipped you with the knowledge and tools to effectively support young women in your pharmacy practice.